Nur Balinka is a Tibetan-style palace garden in the western suburbs of Lhasa. Hidden behind its walls for over a century is a precious set of ancient books. The ancient book researchers and conservators who have handled countless treasures can't help showing their excitement at this exquisite manuscript with its Ingo dyed paper and gold ink. It is called The Perfection of Wisdom in 8,000 Lines. <laughs> In early autumn 2018, a team led by Darwin Niashar, an expert from the Ancient Book Preservation and Conservation Center of the Tibet Autonomous Region Library, go to Norbalinka to make a four-month survey and registration of ancient books. It is part of a nationwide survey of ancient books in China. Since its inception in 2007, the project has completed an inventory of nearly 10 million ancient books. It has helped recover a large number of ancient books that were thought to be lost. But Nia Shar and his colleagues do not always receive good news. An urgent call from Penpat Sering, the deputy curator of the Tibet Autonomous Region Library, leaves Niashar no choice but to put aside the survey work in Norbalinka and rush to Namling County in Shigatse, 200 kilometers away. The registration and conservation of ancient books in Tibet involves facing many unexpected difficulties. More than 90% of Tibetan ancient books are held in Buddhist monasteries, which are frequently built in remote areas far from large settlements. In one such remote monastery, at an altitude of nearly 4,500 meters, Penpa, who is responsible for the survey work in these remote areas, has made some discoveries. In a cave at the back of the nunnery in Namling County, the survey workers stumbled across a large number of ancient Tibetan books in extremely poor condition. The experts initially determined that there are many 14th century religious scrolls in the hoard. The fragments of these ancient books scattered in the cave were once held and read devoutly as treasures. No one knows where they came from. Who financed the writing of these scriptures centuries ago? Why were they abandoned in the cave? Before answering these questions, the more urgent task is to move the books indoors for preservation as soon as possible. Oh, 
，但是从这个你看书名到这些都是粘连的，这些都是以前发霉了。条件，因为寺庙条件条件有限，没能做好这个防水啊这些工作。In this remote monastery with no running water, no cell phone signal, and no stable supply of electricity, many seemingly simple tasks can't be carried out. Improving the storage conditions of the books can't be delayed. And this is only the first step in the conservation process. There is a more difficult problem waiting for Niashar and his team. Unlike common Chinese ancient books, which are usually printed on one side, Tibetan ancient books are usually written on both sides, which undoubtedly makes the restoration work doubly difficult. 分不开那种，它有两层，但是有些实在是分不开的话，那就你还得盖住字，然后这样子搭边修复的话，那比较难。To repair the cracks without obscuring the lettering, the traditional practice is to mend them with fine thread. But such a restoration method would destroy the original appearance of the ancient books and may even cause additional damage. Young La, an ancient book restorer at the Tibet Autonomous Region Library, decided to adopt a new approach to restore the damaged ancient books. This is a huge challenge with great difficulty. Young La separates the already very delicate pages with a pair of tweezers. This requires both courage and care. After hundreds of years of weathering, the ancient pages have become so fragile that even the tiniest mistake can cause them to fragment. Once she begins, there is no second chance. She must finish it all in one go. It's clearly a successful attempt. After separating the page from the middle, Young La sandwiches lining paper between the two parts for reinforcement, which increases the strength of the page without affecting its appearance or lettering. As one of the first ancient book restorers of the Tibet Autonomous Region Library, Young La had been sent to study at the National Library of China for a year. The top restoration experts in China coached her personally. Allowing her to master restoration techniques that have been passed down for about 1,000 years. However, when it comes to the unique traditional Tibetan ancient books, there are still times when Yang La is stretched to her limits. Mia Shar brings a badly damaged page from a manuscript with indigo dyed paper and gold ink. <laughs> Oh, Mm-hmm. 
Although many methods have been tried, Niashar is still worried that these experimental solutions may further damage the books. Before uncovering more secrets from the indigo and gold manuscript, Niashar and Yang La decide to suspend that part of the restoration they are uncertain about. Every year, on the 25th day of the 10th month in the Tibetan calendar, before the night falls, the streets and alleys around the Jokung Monastery is crowded with people celebrating the festival of Galda Namchok. It commemorates the Buddhahood of the founder of the Gelug School of Tibetan Buddhism, Zhe Songkapta. Every windowsill is full of butter lamps In Shigatse, 200 kilometers from the Jokung Monastery, monks and followers are busy preparing for the festival in the Tashi Lunpo Monastery. It is one of the four major monasteries of the Gulag School of Tibetan Buddhism. The usually quiet monastery is starting to buzz. However, few people know that in a house not far from the hustle and bustle, over a dozen monks are engaged in a secret and sacred task. The Lama of Tashi Lanpo Monastery is leading the younger generation of monks in transcribing the Chinese Buddhist canon. They are using the traditional indigo dyed paper and gold ink. Using gold ink made from gold foil powder is something unique to Tibetan culture. The specially made indigo dyed paper is thicker and tougher than ordinary paper. Its surface has a special luster, but this also makes it unsuitable for printing. The paper can only be transformed into sacred scripture by hand, stroke by stroke. Whether the carefully preserved treasure in Norbalinka or a weathered fragment found in a cave, each page of the indigo and gold manuscript must have experienced such reverent handling at the beginning of its life. <laughs> The indigo and gold manuscripts are extremely rare, not only because producing them requires a lot of time and expense, but also because the paper's production is still a secret technique that very few have mastered. Sering Dorje from Niemo County is one of the few paper masters who know its secrets. Dorje is looking for a plant native to the plateau known as wolf poison grass in Chinese, Stellara chamanjasmi. While the sheep around him all avoid its beautiful flowers, Dorje sees them as precious treasures.
The roots of the grass are poisonous to animals, but they are an essential raw material for making Tibetan paper. The process is complex, and everything must be done by hand alone. The roots of the grass are peeled and boiled, and then repeatedly pounded, first breaking down the plant fibers and then reconstituting them. The longer the pounding goes on, the more refined the paper will be. This paper-making process has been handed down for about 1,000 years. Because the grass root is toxic, it makes Tibetan paper resistant to insects. In addition, it's tough and pliable while its colors remain fast. However, the paper still needs to go through more trials to reach the indigo dyed heights. Each sheet needs dyeing several times. All the dyes are made from natural substances, which is key to ensuring that the color of indigo dyed paper will last for centuries. The addition of goat brain and highland barley wine will add depth to its color. The paper's gleaming luster comes from hours of polishing. Sixty-seven-year-old Sering Dorje is the inheritor of this national, intangible cultural heritage of Tibetan papermaking. He started to learn the technique when he was seven and has perfected it for the last 60 years. His two sons are now learning from him and earning their living from it. Few customers ask for the costly indigo dyed paper. Sering Dorje will send this batch to the Tashi Lunpo Monastery for their transcription of the Chinese Buddhist canon. Sering Dorje will finish each sheet of the indigo dyed paper personally. The lovingly made indigo dyed paper is destined to carry the culture of Tibet and its people for eternity. The survey work in Norbalinka is still ongoing.
every volume is carefully disassembled, registered, inspected, and photographed. Those with missing titles are labeled with a new tag, according to tradition. Niashar goes back to the survey site. After seeing the papermaking process for himself, he has gained a fuller understanding of the books. After countless days of disassembling and restoration, the staff's efforts have finally been rewarded. Including the beautifully bound Perfection of Wisdom in 8,000 lines, with its indigo dyed paper and gold ink, the survey team has found 57 first class cultural relics and 132 second class cultural relics, among which there are nine completely unique and well preserved ancient books. A selection of the books has been specially delivered to Beijing by Niashar to form part of an exhibition on the preservation and inheritance of classic books at the National Library of China. This is the most precious item in the collection of the Tibet Autonomous Region Library, a Yuan Dynasty copy of Tibetan research and explanation of Buddhist logico-epistemology. It's an important work on Buddhist logico-epistemology in Tibetan Buddhism, and one of the earliest printed Tibetan texts ever discovered. Thanks to such fastidious efforts, visitors are able to see these rare and precious books and understand something of the difficulty of preserving them. They exemplify the richness and diversity of culture across China. Through the scorching heat of summer and the bitter cold of winter, a group of dedicated people travel to every corner of the land, seeking out priceless books and scrolls. In these magnificent highlands, there are still countless treasures waiting to be rediscovered. <laughs>